Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. I know you're excited, but try to stand still, Claudia. How do you expect me to button you up when you're dancing a jig? You're tickling me, Mom, and your hands are cold. All right. You want to go unbuttoned? No, but I'll get you some gloves to wear. Thank you very much. I've got enough thumbs as it is. Finished? Finished. I've just begun. There ought to be a law against dresses with so many buttons. The buttons are what makes it dressy. What do you do when you're alone? I never dress dressy when I'm alone. It'd be a waste. You mean to say David goes through this for you? His hands are never cold. Say, Mom, count and see what I'm going to marry. <laughs> you mean an Indian chief or a soldier? That's right. Oh, let me see. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief, butcher, baker, Indian chief, soldier... A rich man. You sure that's what the buttons say? Come for yourself if you don't trust me. There, skadoodle. You're all buttoned up. Oh, hand me my belt, would you, Mama? Here. Those, those buttons are very psychic. What do you mean? Carrington invited us to tea yesterday. And now the buttons settle it. It's a sign. You believe in signs, don't you? Well, they work out right, I do. Well, you've just read my buttons. They say I'd marry a rich man. David and I are about to go and have tea with our fortune. Just like that. Just like that. Do I look all right? For the wife of a man who's just about to fleece the golden fleece? No. For you, the wife of a promising young architect? Yes. After tea with Victor Carrington today, David can stop promising. He will be a successful young architect. I'd like to finish those kitchen curtains before I go. Oh, you don't have to go. You can stay here till we get back. No, thank you. I don't live here. Now, try and tell me in simple English... What this tea with Victor Carrington's all about. You must be excited, too. Don't you remember I told you? The way you tell things, once isn't enough. Besides, I always like to hear good news twice. He's the head of that big department store in Chicago that I sat next to at Julia's dinner party last Friday night. Julia says he's quite a bit of Chicago and all of the firm. Very important and stiff. And she sat you next to him. Mm-hmm. Julia must be a woman of some daring. Well, go on now. So, anyway, he was impressed with David, and he asked us to tea with him today. That's all. Hmm. Well, what did David say to him? Just good evening and good night. Well, I always thought David had an impressive manner when he put it on, but I had no idea it was so impressive. Are you sure that's all he said? Positive. After all, I was with Mr. Carrington practically all evening. He sat on my left elbow. Mr. Carrington had heard about the freight terminal idea about David's, and he was pleased to hear that David was involved. That was nice of him. Well, uh, what do you think is going to happen today? I don't know, but D Julia seems to think it's going to be good. And so do the buttons on your dress. She says David ought to say yes to whatever Carrington offers, and then he'll be a rich man, and I'll be a rich wife, and you'll be a rich mother-in-law. Sounds awful. I don't like the sound of it too well myself. Claudia, how does David feel about this? I can't tell. You know how he is about business things. I know, like your father. He wasn't the kind of a man either who brought business home with him. Thank goodness. I can't think of anything duller than dining with the stock market or waking up with a blueprint. Oh, the telephone. A reprieve. I hope it's not Mr. Carrington calling it off. Say hello decently. I always say hello decently. How else can you say it? Hello? Yes? Oh, David, it's you. What a relief. Say, where are you? You should be here. Oh, well, I can go by myself. What do you think I am? Oh, don't say it. David, you're not going to get there late, are you? Well, if you leave the office in five minutes and I leave the house in seven minutes, we'll get there at the same time and that'll be perfect. Claudia, neither of you will get there if you don't hang up. That was Mama. She's trying to break up our happy home. I don't know what she's doing here. Oh, yes, she's making kitchen curtains, white with red dots. Bye. Ah, 
Thank goodness for that. No, where's that tape measure? Let's get the window done, Mama. You haven't got time, Claudia. You'll be late, and I'll be responsible. I've got time. I don't want to get there before David. Not a chance of that. Now, go put your hat on. I'll measure the curtains myself. Without me? I'd rather. You're no help. That is not true. I'm a big help. Look what I've just done for David. Are you going to brag about it for the rest of your life? You don't think he minds, do you? Here's your hat. Mine's what? Is it because of what I said that Carrington wants to talk to him? David's too broad-minded for that. He'll forgive you. Forgive me? You talk as if I'd done something wrong. I said nothing of the sort. You brought it up. David knows I'm not the meddling type. Besides, I didn't talk to Carrington on purpose. He already knew about the freight terminal idea. I just brought it up, and he thinks it's wonderful. All I told him was that it was David's idea, which it was. You're protesting an awful lot. Put on your hat. David won't be so broad-minded if you're late. Maybe I should be late. It's not polite. It'll give David a chance to get the business over. Mama, will you stay here and finish the kitchen curtains? Well, I'll, I'll get them started. Shakespeare will keep you company, won't you, Shakespeare? I've still got a feeling you'd better hurry. I've got a feeling I'm not going to go. What are you talking about? A minute ago, you were all excited. I've got a feeling I'd rather help you finish those kitchen curtains. I told you I don't want any help. But if I don't stay here and watch you, you won't do them at all. Isn't that true, Shakespeare? Something is going on in that head of yours, and you may as well come out and tell me what it is. Nothing's going on in that head of mine. But after all, they're my curtains, and I don't see why I shouldn't have something to do with them. Where are you going? Come back here. Oh, where did I put that number? Well, who are you calling? It's too late to catch David. He's already left. I'm not calling David. I'm calling Mr. Carrington. Well, what for? Tell him I've got more important things to do. He'll like that. What do you intend to tell David? I don't plan to tell him anything. I plan to have him come home and find his wife and let him tell her everything. That's the way I think it should be. And that's why I think David thinks it should be, too. Hello, Mr. Carrington. This is Claudia Norton. Hey, where are you? Claudia, are you at home? Are you all right? I'm in the kitchen. I'm home. I'm all right. What happened to you? Carrington said you called and... Nothing happened to me. See, I'm perfectly fine. Hello. Carrington said you called and that you were tied up on something important and you wouldn't be able to come. That's right. David, how'd it go? Is Mother all right? She's fine, too. She just went home. And what was so important? Nothing was so important that you aren't going to tell me what happened with Carrington first. I've been on pins and needles. Well, it was pretty exciting. Was he nice? Couldn't have been nicer. What did he say? Don't just stand there. Tell me what he said. You haven't given me a chance. What did he say? Well, first, you tell me what you've been doing. Oh, David, you're impossible. You love making me suffer. I think you're you're a... A, a sadist. Is that what you are? Mm-hmm. Well, what were you doing? I won't tell you until you tell me what Carrington said. He said you were a lovely girl. I know that. Conceited, too. No, just impatient. <laughs> well, he said he was very interested in this freight terminal idea. I know that, too. What else did he say? He said that he'd been working out some such idea for his own business in Chicago. David, tell me something I don't know. <laughs> you're cute when you're impertinent and impatient and nosy. But come to the point. He said that uh, he didn't have the right person to work it out for him. So he'd been unable to start moving on. And? And in words of one syllable. So he asked me more about my plans for the freight terminal. And? Can't you say anything else? Then what? Good. Well, then I, then after I told him uh, how I saw it, how it should be designed and built, he asked me if I would be interested in working out it further for him. That's wonderful, darling. That's just what you want to do, isn't it? Quite an opportunity, and Carrington's got the money to push it through. And they lived happily ever after. David, when do we start? Anytime I want to. It's up to me. Oh, wasn't it a stroke of luck that Julia put Carrington next to me? But most lucky of all is that you thought of the freight terminal in the first place. We'd better call up Roger and tell him. Yeah, that, that's the, the hitch. What is 
Carrington wants me to work for him. But I, I don't understand. Well, he thinks I ought to leave the firm and come in with him, be in charge of it, and see to it that it goes through. Well, what's wrong with that? That's wonderful. Except you don't want to leave Roger, do you, David? I don't want to, no, but well, this is a, a very big opportunity. I'm, of course, I'm, I'm very excited about this freight terminal project myself. And... Do you think Roger would mind you're going in with Mr. Carrington very much? No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it right there. I haven't decided yet. I know, but do you think he will mind? I don't think so, dear. Not when I explain it to him. Roger is a, a very swell friend. I, I think he'd want me to take a chance like this. Must have been so exciting talking to Carrington. He's nice, even in spite of being so important, so rich and Hold everything. Hold on now. You're not prejudiced about people being rich, are you? Oh, only when they're not nice. Oh, David, tell me more. Tell me exactly how he said everything. Well, there's nothing more to tell. We didn't discuss any details as to where or when. I'm to think it over and call him in a day or so. Call him tomorrow. He won't be in town. I'll call him the next day. Oh, David, I wish I could have been there. Now it's my turn. Why weren't you there? Oh, because Mama was here, and we were just getting started making the kitchen curtains, and I hated to go in the middle and leave her. You should see them. They're beautiful. Well, they'd better be. Is that the only reason you didn't come? Isn't that good enough for you? I never thought that kitchen curtains were such an important item in your life. Didn't you know? And this way we both got we both got our business, your business and my business, done both of us. Carrington was very disappointed that you weren't there. I don't think so. He just said that to be nice. I was disappointed, too. I don't think that either. You look awfully nice in that dress with all the buttons. Mama buttoned me. You can unbutton me. You got all dressed up and... Then you changed your mind, didn't you? What are you driving at? Mm, just this. You were afraid I'd think you were meddling, meddling in my business, and the meddling kind of white. Oh, silly. You don't think that, do you? Little meddler. It was pretty big of you to give up coming this afternoon. Big of me nothing. I told you Mama was here and the curtains. Besides, I don't understand a word about business. You know that. Well, for someone who doesn't know anything, you know an awful lot. And it's an awful shame to let that pretty dress go to waste. How would you like to step out to dinner? Come home late. I get so sleepy when it's late. This dress has so many buttons. Oh, so it has. You'd rather get started on them early, wouldn't you? Come over here, darling. Turn around. Rich man, poor man, beggar man... Thief. Don't bother counting, darling. We're very rich now. All I want is to be married to you. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Youngsters make for the refrigerator in search of Coca-Cola as bees make for flowers in search of honey. They naturally prefer the household where there's plenty of Coke on ice, don't you? If you want the neighborhood kids to feel that yours is the friendliest house on the block, get into the custom of buying Coke by the case. Then you'll never run short of hospitality for guests of all ages. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. Now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. Mm -hmm.